so uh, basically the objective of this of these sessions of these five sessions is just to give you a, a walk through of the type of SAS coding that you have done however uh, taking talking from a technical perspective uh, these sessions I do not suppose would be much different in terms of content uh, as to what you guys have already covered the plus uh, part of these sessions are that you would be getting a fallback on the industry side of things so basically you guys have learned data steps proc steps and a lot of the variations of them now within five sessions it would not be possible for me to cover up each and everything however uh, you would be walked through the different aspects of model uh, say the different aspects of SAS coding and how are they treated in the industry what are the interpretations when do I do a particular data step or when do I do a particular proc step so if two proc steps are doing more or less similar kind of things then how do I so which is the one that I would choose so uh, over here there would be no day one day two day three day four as you guys have seen it would be more of industry examples uh, scenarios cases where you get to see different kinds of things being uh, developed uh, so how is SAS used and when is uh, a particular function used and so on so <clears throat> So just one request to you, to everyone, to this entire audience, uh, that people who have done the SAS analytics module with us, could you please just inbox, uh, type the type your name, your location, and the trainer from whom you have done the SAS. And uh, another earnest request to all of you attending the session is that at the end of the session, uh, do get back to us with your feedbacks about the session. The way I mean if it augments your knowledge base to some extent and what are the benefits that you could have done so that we could make this a practice going forward and as such uh, help you out with further options or further opportunities to develop your knowledge your basics of SAS so uh, with this I'll just initiate the session today so mainly we would be focusing our focus would in mostly be on uh, you know uh, the base part base part of SAS however uh, some parts of SQL and some parts of macro would start coming in here and there however mainly our focus would be on the base functions uh, base SAS functions like the data steps the proc steps proc means proc univariate data step format rename statement so we have done we have covered all these statements before we know that and what we would be doing is going forward we would take up uh, each of these functions each of these statements in relation to the industry so so uh, to start off uh, SAS as we know stands for the statistical analysis system and by nature SAS is an ETL tool now by ETL what we refer to is extraction transformation and loading tool so SAS as a software has the capacity to extract information, extract data from different maintained in different databases, which might be database in within the SAS environment or databases outside the environment. So as an extraction technique, as an extraction tool, it has the capacity to extract data from external or endogenous databases. So given any kind of a file format be it excel be it the csv be it a text file or be it a sas maintained file sas maintained documents uh, sas can extract data from anywhere so that is basically that has been the beauty of the software sas and with it you can extract any huge amount of data and process those data very fast now coming to the transformation function transformation is just I mean it refers to the transformation of the raw data so I extract the data from a database and so suppose I am extracting Walmart's data in an SQL format so I reach out to the server I just extract the data from their files and I have that data and suppose that data contains around uh, 20 million observations 20 million transactional observations and across different centers so what do I make out of that data 
So obviously for analytics to thrive, there must be a business problem and attached to that, there has to be a data. And the, the beauty of analytics would be to link this data and form, take some business decisions. And while taking the business decision, what we need to do is we need to transform that raw data to give us insights. So SAS has a wonderful technique to uh, transform this raw data. So it has different techniques of uh, different descriptive as well as different predictive models or different predictive techniques to transform a raw data and thereby give us good business insights. Now transformation of the data might just involve creating a simple summary of the data or it might be as simple as uh, creating a regression model or uh, it might be creating a logistic regression model, whatever. But to, to create or to transform the data in a way which would help us get business insights. And finally, coming to the loading part, uh, this refers to the loading of the created results. So for people of, of all of us who have gone through the SaaS software, SaaS as a software, we can see that uh, it has a very well-designed data interface. So mostly for training purposes, the SaaS that we are using is a more basic version of a SaaS. Whereas more advanced uh, SaaS versions such as SaaS Enterprise, Minor and stuff, uh, they have even more digitally advanced interfaces. So these are the three basic functions of SAS to extract the raw data, transform the data, then load the results in a manner which gives maximum visibility of the data behavior to the particular, uh, to the end user. So we just have this, so this is the ETL tool or this is the ETL function of SAS. Now, in our discussion, we would be uh, touch basing on each of these functions to some extent, right? So today, initially, we will start off with the extraction part of SAS. Now, when I'm talking about extraction, I'm talking about extracting data from different databases. Now, how does this extraction operate? Now, basically, there are three types of extraction, which can I mean, the extraction process can be broadly classified into three parts. One is importing or manipulating data or extracting data from internal databases. That is, I'm extracting data from within the SaaS environment. So I might have a files located in one particular library. From there, what I'm doing is I'm extracting the data and uh, to another library. So that is a part of it. Now, <clears throat> so that part goes with the importing data from the internal databases. Coming to the next part, it is importing data from the external databases. Now suppose uh, the files exist in the in any alien format, maybe an Excel, a CSV, Access, etc. So over there, SAS also has the capacity to import such data from uh, other software environment into its own conducive environment. And you know that that is mostly done using proc import, file, in file statements, and so on. Finally, coming down to data extraction using proc SQL. So SQL procedure is a very simple way to uh, extract data from within SAS environment. So over there you have multiple files and you are extracting different variables from different files and you are doing all kinds of joins, you are doing all kinds of merges and you are forming out one single data set. So SAS has this capacity to extract data from internal as well as external data sources. And that is where the major role of SAS actually comes in. Now, the question that comes up is if SAS is, so obviously what, I, what gets implied from this discussion is that SAS itself has an inbuilt data set with it. So there is a inbuilt uh, database that SAS has. And that database, so the question that comes up is how is that database maintained within SAS? Now, if you recall, uh, SAS having this internal, inbuilt internal database is something which is which distinguished SAS from its counter, counterpart or its contemporary BI tools from uh, its contemporary BI tools during those days. 
Now, SAS's database is maintained in the form of a libraries. So basically, if you want to create, just a moment guys, just hold on. Uh, So uh, basically the question that first comes up is, how is this database actually maintained within SAS? So the database is maintained as a internal uh, library system. So what exactly is a library in SAS? So a library is nothing but as, uh, I mean, if you have seen a library at, uh, I mean, at the institution where you have studied, where you have done your academics, uh, you would see that the basic idea of a library is you have different organized shelves, uh, shelves and over there you have different books. And the best part is uh, that those books are arranged in an alphabetical order. Now, coming from here comes the concepts of libraries. Now, libraries are nothing but they are folders which contain data sets, inbuilt data sets in the SAS format in an alphabetical order. Now when I'm talking about libraries, there are two different kinds of libraries. As we know that there is a one set of a library is an inbuilt library within SAS, libraries uh, which we can actually see if we visit over here. So. I'll just use this list view over here. This list view actually makes the view easier. So over here we have things like the SAS help, the map, SAS user and work. Now out of all these libraries, so these are all inbuilt libraries in SAS having uh, inbuilt SAS databases. So if I go and click on to SAS help, I would see that there is a lot of, a lot of data sets built within this. Now what exactly is the objective of maintaining this database? This is an internally created database within SAS. And you have where you have SAS data sets which can be used for different reference purposes. Suppose you want to understand why a particular, how would a particular SAS function work? Then uh, this kind of a thing would actually help us or this library would help us in using the data sets to create the to have an understanding of the functions. Now, so that is basically the objective of the inbuilt libraries. Now, out of all the libraries that we have, uh, there are just two of these libraries which are mostly used in day-to-day -day work. One is the SAS help library where you, which has data sets and that might help us in understanding some very specific SAS functions. However, there is this another data set called the work library uh, which is the temporary library in SAS. Now, when I say a temporary library, what I mean is data sets which are stored in this particular library are of temporary nature. So once you terminate your SAS session, you would never be able to recover the data sets when you actually get back to the SAS session. So the data sets in this library are not stored and there is no way you can recover the data sets in a future SAS session. So the work of this library is to create or is to contain all intermediate data sets. Suppose uh, say when in the industry when we are doing a lot of complicated exercises together, say uh, we start from a data extraction. So there is a data set A and we, we do multiple adjustments and go to create data set E. Then from A to E, A would be the initial data set and E would be the final. In between are all in, like intermediate data sets meant for temporary use. So those are created in the work library. All intermediate data sets are not always maintained in the final library. This is done in order to, you know, minimize the space constraints that a particular uh, server or a particular uh, drive might have at an organizational level. So the work library actually plays a very critical part in uh, this 
this in this in, in that process so whenever there are a lot of intermediate data sets that needs to be created uh, what library used and only the final data sets are stored in the user defined or the permanent libraries now having mentioned user defined libraries so we the first thing we need to understand is what exactly is a user defined library so as you guys would be aware that these are libraries which are defined by the user themselves and these are all permanent libraries so when i say permanent library what i refer to the what i refer to is that this particular library is one which you can actually retrieve in successive disjoint SAS sessions. So when I say successive disjoint SAS sessions, what I mean is, suppose you are running this session, you close this session and tomorrow when you get back to work, you again restart. So you can always retrieve back to those data sets which were created in that library if those are created in a permanent or in a user defined library. Now the basic concept of a user defined library is to map the SAS environment to a exogenous environment. Now libraries are a concept which is very specific to the SAS environment. My desktop doesn't know what a library is. So my desktop and my operating desktop operating system knows what uh, folders are, right? So that's a folder. What I can do is I can actually create a folder, a physical folder at a physical location in my desktop and map that physical folder to this software environment. So libraries do nothing but they just map the physical folder in a desktop to the software environment. Now this library is specified or this mapping is done using a function called the libname statement. 